BYU is uh, unique. I mean, they're just different in everybody you play because of the uh, three-point line. 774. That's the amount of three-pointers BYU has taken so far this season. On its own, that number might not mean much to you, so let me give some context. When it comes to two-point attempts, BYU has taken just 762. In other words, 50.4% of the Cougars' shots have been from behind the three-point arc. They shoot more threes than twos. If the season ended today, they would be just the fourth high major team ever to shoot more threes than twos in a season. Villanova did it in 2019, the year after they won the national championship. West Virginia did it when they were coached by John Beeline in 2006. Then BYU is next on the list. The Cougars are also arguably having the best season of those four teams. They rank 14th overall in Kempom and their offense is in the top 10 in adjusted efficiency. The fast break is where BYU's offense especially looks like a video game. Flying down the court and running the wings for quick throw ahead threes. On average, offenses tend to take fewer threes in transition than in the half court, but that's not the case with the Cougars. 53% of their shot attempts in transition have been from behind the arc. Video game type numbers. Here BYU secures a defensive rebound. They're down by three with a little over two minutes left to play. Some coaches in this situation would have their team play conservative and walk the ball up to generate a good shot, but not head coach Mark Pope. His team flies up the court like they always do and ties the game with a big three. If we rewind the play back, that's not even a guard taking that three. It's six foot eleven Noah Waterman who starts at the four for the Cougars. In fact, all five starters for BYU can let it fly in transition. Even their center, Ali Khalifa, shoots the three. Khalifa is one of the most fun players to watch in the country. Just wait until I show you his passing ability later in the video. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you're probably familiar with the term zoom action. I made a video last year about how it's taking over basketball. So it's probably no surprise to you that zoom is also one of the main components of BYU's offense. But they use the action differently than any other team I've seen. In this video, we'll dive deep into what makes BYU unique and all of the X's and O's of an offense that is one of my favorites to watch in the country. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and let's watch some basketball. As you might expect for a team that shoots so many threes, BYU has great spacing. A lot of their offense operates with all five players spaced out on the perimeter, opening up the paint for drives and cuts to the basket. Because defenses must respect the three-point shooting of so many BYU players, the Cougars are actually one of the most efficient two-point shooting teams in the country. They shoot over 58% on their two-pointers, with all that spacing and shooting gravity often leading to wide open layups like you see here. On this play, notice how the two UCF weak side defenders are outside of the paint, worried about the three point shooters they're guarding instead of stopping the ball. And this time the UCF defender is in good position on the midline, but again he's so concerned about the kick out three he just concedes an open layup. What you're seeing in these clips is why the three point line can be such a dangerous tool. The more shooters on the court, the more spread out the defense gets. The more spread out the defense gets, the easier it is to get to the paint. If the defense then tries to take away the paint, those shooters get more open looks. It's a never ending cycle of efficient basketball. One player that especially benefits from BYU spacing is Fuseni Traore. He comes off the bench for the Cougars and plays the five, where he likes to operate with his back to the basket. Tra 
Traore is a good post-up player. He's shooting over 60% on his post-up attempts. But part of the reason he's able to be so efficient is because BYU's opponents are often terrified of giving help in the post and risking giving up a three. Usually when a defense is guarding a good post scorer, you'll see them either double team or at least dig down to make the player uncomfortable. But Traore, in my opinion, has basically the best job in all of basketball. His teammates draw so much attention that he's able to dribble two, three, four times without any help being sent his way. West Virginia was one of those opponents that chose to let Traore dribble freely in the paint. And their coach, Josh Eiler, talked about that decision not to double team after the game. Now the question is, do we double or not? And, um... It's hard to double a team like that, you know, and as well as they pass, you know, they pass that thing right out there and, and one more, one more, and it's another another three, three point shot. As Eiler mentions, BYU is also a very good passing team. They assist on 64% of their baskets, which is top five in the country. Their knockdown shooting combined with unselfish passing is hard to guard, no matter which way you choose to defend them. The margin for error when guarding BYU is just so small. Here, Arizona State initially does a great job of disrupting the offense by denying passes and switching off the ball. But when Frankie Collins makes one small mistake and gambles for a steal, the Cougars turn it into a three in an instant. All right, so now let's do a quick refresher on zoom action. The definition of zoom is a pin down screen where the player receiving that screen then runs into a dribble handoff. In this example, Grady Eifert sets the pin down and Evan Boudreau executes the dribble handoff. Teams like Purdue have used zoom to generate shots for three point shooters sprinting towards the dribble handoff. BYU does do a little bit of that. This is their first play of the game against Houston Christian and Trevin Nell zooms right into a three. Here it's their first play of the second half against Texas and this time Waterman nails the three. However, that's not necessarily where BYU does most of their damage. The Cougars version of the zoom offense is all about reading the defense. For example, notice how number one on Wyoming is playing defense here. He's above his man trying to beat him through the dribble handoff. So Nell makes a read and rejects the zoom action, cutting to the basket instead. BYU makes a living off of those backdoor cuts to the hoop. It forces the defense to either stop cheating the screen or risk getting rejected to death all game long. Notice what else BYU does as the zoom is occurring. They start Waterman down in the restricted area and then lift him up towards the perimeter, opening up the paint for the backdoor cut. Here's an example where the Cougars use the zoom screen and again they lift up to the perimeter right as a tiki ali a tiki is rolling to the basket the next read off of the zoom is the curl again look at how the defense is guarding jackson robinson this time texas is trailing him so robinson takes advantage by curling the screen and beating his man to the basket my favorite part of BYU's entire offense is a different type of curl where the player receiving the zoom runs past the dribble handoff and then curls from the top of the key to the basket. I've never seen a team get as many baskets off of these fake handoffs as the Cougars did. Part of the reason it's so effective is because of BYU's great spacing that I already described. But another big reason is the incredible court vision and passing of Khalifa. The 6'11 center is currently third in the entire Big 12 in assist rate. He's almost always the passer in these fake handoff situations. Watch on this one how he pivots right as Robinson is running by, essentially setting a pick on the Kansas State defender. That reminds me of a similar action Tim Duncan and the Spurs used to run using that same pivoting technique. Side note, check out how Khalifa turns his back and runs away before BYU even scores. It's like the passing equivalent of Steph Curry calling his shot. Another part of what makes Khalifa so dangerous is he's not afraid to throw a risky pass. There's not really an angle here, but that doesn't stop him from trying to make something out of nothing. One last read that BYU makes out of the zoom action is specifically done when teams try to switch. 
Here, Dallin Hall is setting the pin down, and you can see Baylor wants to switch the action. So instead of using the screen, Spencer Johnson just stays put right where he is, getting an open three against the switch. Same thing on this example for Nell. You can see Baylor is pointing to indicate the switch, so Nell just stays in place and nails the three. One solution for defenses guarding the zoom is to pressure Khalifa as much as possible. Here Johnson is open on the curl, but Khalifa is facing too much ball pressure to see the pass. On this one, Texas Tech does the opposite, sagging off of Khalifa and covering Johnson with that defender. The sagging method can be a little tough to get away with though, because Khalifa is a respectable 36% career three-point shooter. Besides from the zoom, the stagger screen is another one of Mark Pope's favorite actions. BYU will run shooters off of the staggers looking to hunt threes or curl to the hoop just like we saw with the zoom. The Cougars will even put not just two players in the stagger screen, but three players, making it so every off-ball player is on one side of the court. The staggers and the zooms can also be meshed into one big action. Like here, they start in a stagger, then Waterman zooms up to Khalifa, only for another one of those fake hand offs that leads to a layup. Now you can really see the beauty of BYU's free-flowing offense. The constant off-ball movement and high-level reads are a joy to watch, especially when the defense starts desperately chasing around the different shooters. With all that being said, the Cougars have by no means been perfect this season. When they played Oklahoma, the Sooners chose to play drop coverage when defending BYU ball screens, staying home on shooters and forcing the handler into twos instead of helping on the roll and risking giving up threes. And we just made a decision to go to a drop coverage to try to play a two-man game, and they got us early. Got us in a lob dunk, they got us in a... But at halftime, they had eight two-pointers on 21 shots. And that's 16 points and 21 shots. So like, even though, oh, they got a dunk, they got, they got, we, we were playing the percentages. In their loss to Houston, BYU shot 38 threes. Mark Pope was asked after the game if that was too many three pointers. And I thought his answer was interesting. We're going to cross the line sometimes into getting super belligerent. Um, we just are, and we did tonight, and that hurt us. Easily, we could select six of those possessions where we're like, hey, you know what, let's actually, let's actually um, challenge the defense a little bit more than we are right now. And if you give us those five possessions, you know, it gives us a better chance to win the game. Um, but those conversations are super complicated with a, a locker room full of guys that are desperately trying to do exactly what we need to do to win because a lot of times guys end up swinging too wide and we can't swing too wide. So yes, live by the three, die by the three does somewhat apply to this BYU team. They do happen to be 0-3 in games where they shoot under 30% from behind the arc. But they're eighth in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency for a reason. They're really tough to guard. And while it remains to be seen if they can get enough stops on the defensive end to make a deep run in the tournament, if I was a coach, I certainly wouldn't want to see them near me in the bracket come March. Thank you very much for watching. For those of you that aren't aware, I have a newsletter where I cover college basketball X's and O's and analytics every Monday. I actually wrote about BYU's offense back in the beginning of January. The link to sign up is in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.